Hi, right, morning. Tim from Scott Country National. Uh, today I've been asked by one of my landowners to come down and conduct a deer survey. He's going to be um, selling up and the rest of the deer are going to go to, to market. And he's obviously closing up, selling up. Uh, we're going to check the boundaries. So any deer on the outside of the boundaries will be a straight coal. Um, for that, that's why I've got the 6.5 with me there. Sporting the uh, Element Helix 6 to 24 by 50. These are available on our website. And I'll also be using uh, the Pulsar uh, Merger XL50 LRF. And I'll be using a drone as well. So how the ground's laid out, it sort of slopes off down to the bottom. You've seen me film here before. Um, low lying ground there. And then down to the bottom is an area we call the channels. Uh, it's a long line field with high banks either side. Uh, about six months ago a load of deer come out a tree fell uh, knocked the fence down we got all the most of the deer back in but there's a few living on the outside um, these are hand reared red deer so again they're pretty tame so they'll they'll stay within the local area they're not they're not branching off and going too far away so what i'll do is i'll get the drone up i'll check the boundary first check down to where the fields are where i can see the deer uh, then i'll know what areas to go to now the beauty of the drone, again, I can cover a lot of ground without having to traipse through all the woods, potentially spook anything. So the owners give me the list what he's looking for. So I'm looking for three good stags. They should be in a, a penned area just down there. But he said he has seen one out on the boundaries. Uh, and the rest of the hinds are down the bottom in the field down there. So we'll get the drone over. We'll have a quick scan around, see where my area is where I'm going to go focus on. Uh, and then I'll get down there with a the merger. Uh, do my count and I'll check all my numbers there and I'll and I can see what I've what I'm looking at and I can report back to the owner as I said anything on the outside of the boundaries will be a straight coal so not going to use a thermal for that I'll just use a bit of day glass it's a nice crisp frosty morning a nice minus one here in Northumberland so we'll um, we'll get cracking with that and we'll see how we get on cheers right so I've got the drone up now and as you'll see from the footage, I can see my height, uh, my stags straight in the field there. So that's them there, I can account for them. There we go, there's, there's a two in the bottom there, also with some sheep. So I'll get round there and have a little check down there because I should be looking for one more in that field. And there's the remainder of the hinds here. So we'll get down and have a little check here as I was saying the beauty of the beauty of the drone is you can cover a large area so I can see one two three four five down there and then moving down to the bottom you got the remainder down there there's seven eight nine ten eleven twelve in that field so i don't need to go down there and then moving down to the bottom here this is where we call the channels this large field that you can see now and that's the boundaries i've got to be checking so i can just see there another load of deer sat on the side down the far end but i can't quite make out what the numbers are and I, like i said i don't i don't want to buzz over too much and uh spook them all so i'll get down there and check that by hand as we say on foot with the uh, with the mergers and I can gather the numbers so again just proving the versatility of a drone and the areas you can cover and everything like that is it really is a useful tool now you can get the, you can get a, lot, a number of drones you can get thermal ones you can get the basic thermal or you can get a really advanced one nowadays they've all got 640 sensors on them so the sensors are just as good as your handheld thermals but again that does come with the price tag so if you're using it for a business or something like that, it really does pay dividends if you need to cover a lot of ground doing big surveys um, like we're conducting today. But this is this is only a small one, so we're not too fussed on that, but we'll just get back now and uh, get the drone back down and then we'll get out with a the thermal, go and check these fields and then we'll check in the wood lines. See so if the advantage of if, if I had a thermal drone here with me now, I could check the wood lines, I could check everything via the thermal and not need to potentially go down there by foot. So what I can do 
is I can check it in camera mode and then I'll have to do it manually by, by hand with a handheld thermal. So the advantage of a thermal drone being able to cover all of that without stepping foot down there. So we'll get, we'll get on now and get cracking with that. Cheers. All right, so we're just walking down now. I'm just gonna get down to the bottom, bottom fields. I've got the, uh, the camera on top of the recon. Using it as a big selfie stick. So uh, we'll get down. I've got the, got the mergers, the rifle. I'm just gonna make my way down to the bottom field here as a gate access. I'll get down. I'll check the stags, as I said before, I'll check with a drone. I uh, just wanna confirm them by a hand. And then uh, I'll push down to the bottom field where we're um, gonna conduct the main survey. Right, so we just, just broke the gate of this field here. We're coming down now. So down the bottom is where we saw in the first bit of drone footage where we had all the hinds out. So on with the merger now. As you can clearly see there, what I couldn't identify with the drone, there's another stag sat in the field. One to the right there. The rest of the hinds there. Get that on black hot now. You can clearly see the antlers on the stag. Sat down there. And the hinds, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we've got fourteen in there, so on the original request there should have been twenty in there, so we'll get round and have a quick scan. We've got the next field down the bottom there. As you can see, there's stuff up in the foliage there. It's potentially deer laying down, but we'll get up and have a look. All right, yeah, so we'll crack on down there now and we'll uh, correct the rest of the numbers. What we'll have a quick chat about whilst, we're, whilst we've stopped here is the beauty of the mergers. Now, the merger XL was 1024 by 768 sub 40 millikelvin net D sensor gives you that absolute crisp clarity that you need to identify deer. You can quite easily see from the footage there that I had a stag in amongst the hind there. I couldn't see that via the drone. So it wasn't until I got down there to do uh, my hand sort of survey with, my, with the Mark 1 eyeball, I could see that detail with the mergers. So the beauty of this as well, it gives you the ability to zoom in to times 20 without any pixelization. You will get some pixelization, but it gives you the beauty to zoom in a lot further without getting that uh, pixelization that you do get with most uh, spotters on the market at the moment. So a real nice little tool. If you want the crisp, clear image, the mergers are one to go for. Also the other thing you wouldn't see with the drone as well, I can see all the birds up, set up in the tree. The, the detail that it provides using thermal for things like this is uh, has its massive advantages. So what you wouldn't normally see with an, the naked eye or a set of glass binos is everything in the trees. Now I can't make out what they are right down there. This is about 800 yards, but having thermal, I can identify it and then gives me the option to stalk in a little bit closer to get, and get eyes on. So from what I was saying there, down in this next field here, I can see, I can already account for all of the, the deer down the bottom. But what I can see, I can see a deer set up on the top of the hill there. So that's outside the boundary. I could just show you that now. With the merger. You can clearly see that deer set up on top of the hill there. Now I can't make out if it's a row or a red, but easy identifiable as a deer. I can see him just sitting in the woods at the top there. And again I can already count for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight deer down in the next field. Now I don't really need to push down there any further so what I can do now 
is obviously I can see the deer up on the top. Um, that's that is another reason why I've come here to do just to check out on the boundaries. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make my way down down the side of this um, through a gate at the bottom here, down the side of this field. I'm just trying to get a bit closer to identify what it is. If it's a red, then it'll be put on for the coal. And then if it's not, if it's a rail, just leave it because he's quite happy to leave uh, the local deer mixing around around the perimeters of the the deer and his boundaries around here. So we'll push down a bit further now and uh, try and identify what that deer is. See him just out the side of the on the side of the hill over there. So I'm going to push down here about another 50 yards and see if I can get set for the shot. All right, so there we go then. So got done dummy survey. Obviously conducted around the boundaries. As you'll see there, the high high ground, the bottom fence line there. Obviously the boundaries on the top there. So the deer was just sat just under this tree here. So he was at, he was outside of the fence so that was one of the ones that the owner wanted gone so that's what he come down to do so all in all stalks along the bottom of the riverbed here come around the back i know this ground pretty well um a regular shooter down here for foxing and whatnot um but just the beauty of having the mergers i could see everything like, he couldn't see me i could see him just through just through the um the undergrowth and then even even if it's not for deer surveys using it there to see any roosting birds or anything like that all up in the trees i could see everything so another another successful trip there Alright, so just just got back to the truck, absolutely sweating. Um, so yeah, so I'll just summarise then the beauty of using something like the Pulsar Merger XL50 LOF. Um, as you see there from the from the drone footage, I'm sweating. Um, it's got its time and its place. Like I say, if it was a thermal drone like the ones we sell, um, I could have saved myself a lot of walking there. But using a drone to cover a vast area is a uh, is a tool within itself again you have to do all your proper um cca licenses and stuff like that but that's that's easy enough done um but once you've got that and you're familiar with using a drone to cover large areas like uh open fields or bigger states things like that the, the list is endless what you can use them for so again a really purposeful tool especially having a thermal one with a zoom or something like that that'd, that'd have saved me a lot of walking but getting back down to the nitty gritty um using something like the pulsar merger it's got its place and it'll always have its place over over drones and things like that because adverse weather uh, windy days things like that when you can't fly a drone you need to get back on your foot and get you get out with the uh your hand tools effectively so i don't think there's a better tool on the market for clear identification having a 10 24 7 6 8 sensor these are the cream of the crop and uh these are my primary tool and I won't be without them. Um, even from 
everything from ratting up to deer stalking up to surveys foxing you name it this is my my go-to thermal but um yeah but yeah that, that ended well so i'll go report back to the landowner now tell him what i've done with my survey how many deer we've got in each pen i checked all the boundaries all the fences are intact there's a small tree leaning over somewhere just potentially a fence will come down in the future but like i said at the start this is going to go all these deer are going to go to market now and he's closing shop so that's that but then again had the had the trusty 65 with me so that one red that i saw on the hill that's outside the boundary well not outside the actual outside boundary but outside the pens he's not going to bother chasing him in so i'll report that to him and he can come and collect that later so all in all successful survey conducted i'll give my findings in and uh, thanks for watching so if you enjoyed this week's episode, please like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified when we release all our latest videos. And all the products you've seen in this video are available on our website at scottcountry.co.uk. Head over there now. All yours today. Cheers.